space in which people really can get involved. And, and actually, never have we had a, a, a greater opportunity for us to be the media. Yeah. Y you know, because exactly. I went on, your, on the London 2012 website today just to have a look at it and see how it was laid out. But also, for every hideous article in the Daily Mail that many readers don't agree with, you will find 200 comments yeah. underneath it saying they don't agree with it. Yeah. They're getting the message Absolutely. louder than they've ever got it. And it is, you know, we can all make it happen. And, and yes. you know, the great proliferation of phone-ins, which I'm not always a wonderful fan of, but at least that gives yes. everybody yeah. a chance to give their opinion as well. And the international press will make a difference as well, as it's commentating on it as well. So, yeah. It will open up yeah. more on that side of it. Question here, and then um, I know that you have to be. Um, are we are we still so doing we'll okay? Just make Very sure good. That, um, All right. We take everyone's question. Great. It's on. Uh, Tessa, I was to say how inspirational it was. Um, I work at Tesco, and I think mass engagement can be brought about by businesses yeah. really getting engaged. We've got millions of consumers, millions of staff, mm. and their families. And you know, I think there's a huge amount to do there. My question uh, was, it, was, it, was about ethics, because your speech was very interesting, because you touched on financial services and the problem of bankers. And this led me to think that some of the problems of banking come about from excess wish to succeed and to gain a lot. And there is a parallel, I think, with Olympic endeavor, where if you're a top athlete, you've really got to work and gain. And my question is, can that ever be bad? Is there ever an ethical issue in terms of trying to succeed in sport? Or is it always good? I think we also need Matthew to come in on yeah. that one as well. <laughs> <laughs> Which could side we, of that going to come down have on? Success, uh, success and failure. Uh, I am never going to win an Olympic medal, but I will... <laughs> Let, 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 let me defer to the Olympian here. Um, I, at Olympic level, no, it can't possibly be bad because in order to win an Olympic gold medal, boy, have you got to lose on your way up because that's the only way mm. that you learn how to win is when other people beat you up and you, know, you figure out a better way to improve yourself and, 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 and that way. I, I, I genuinely think that actually in sport generally, um, you know, in sport globally, uh, wanting to be better is is only a good thing. I don't I don't think there's a, downs a downside. I don't think there's unless well, of course, if it spills over into into cheating, maybe that's maybe that's the the kind of thrust of your question. Um, but even then, uh, even at Olympic level, even in the most you know horrendous examples of sport, um, the, the 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 cheats are probably you know two, three percent of people are trying to cheat. And you hope that you're catching, you know, a large percentage of those people uh, and making very good, you know, very good examples of punishing them, if that, you can make a good example of that. But, you know, calling them out very, very strongly. I, I, I don't think, you know, I can, I can list there are something like 110 uh, Olympic gold medalists uh, from this country, and I know about 75 of them. And, the others are dead, um, <laughs> um, um, but but you can you can count almost on two hands the number uh, the, the Olympic gold medalists who've made made a living out of it, and so really the reward for winning an Olympic gold medal is is still pretty small. It really is a you know if you if you go after it thinking it's going to be you know fame and riches and you know a, a kind of wonderful life, it's it, it's great in lots of ways, but but excess and, and money isn't, isn't, isn't going to be the reward, I wouldn't have said. That's great. Right up here. Yep. Oh, there. Yeah. Very good. Hi. Um, <clears throat> I didn't know why Jill invited me, but she wanted a French person in the audience tonight. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely to have you. <laughs> to show our fair play and congratulate you to have beaten Paris in the Olympics. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, I've, but you should know, Tessa, that, you know, that we, we, uh, you, I'm, I'm an Arsenal supporter, right? I have a box at Arsenal. You came to my box a few years ago with your lovely daughter, and I saw you screaming for Arsenal, and I can see that, you know, why you won the Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> so you probably have two or 300,000 French people behind you in London, so we are proud for you, Matthew. 
and we are very proud to be part of this city. We were actually going for London when there was a bid and not going for Paris because we live here and we are happy to have the Olympics in this city. Two questions, one for Tony. Are you going to organize what most of the young people are waiting for? Could be uh, a massive rock concert of some sort a few days before the Olympic starts? And uh, for you, Tessa, a question. Um, uh, there's a business mantra saying what can be measured can be achieved. If you had to be measured on one achievement in 2012 after the Olympics are gone and before the world collapse, uh, <laughs> what would it be? Very good. Do you want to start with the rock concert first? Okay. Um, <laughs> you can have a think. <laughs> That's very I'll do good. The, rock concert. the answer to that is yes. Um, what we, um, we're not going to announce the details of what there's going to be, but what we've said is that between um, June the um, 20th, 21st, and the end of the Paralympic Games, uh, we'll have a big festival called, um, brilliantly, Festival 2012. Um, <laughs> and. Uh, I, I thought it was an inspired moment, and you know, <laughs> when we came up with that one, that being your uh, big achievement. that's right. That's <laughs> <laughs> um, and in that, it, it won't just you know, it'll be art and culture in all its forms. So you know, we're talking to some people about some very big concerts. I think the notion that people are out there enjoying what London and actually other parts of the UK can offer um, is really, really important. We're um, also um, looking at some exciting street theatre as well. I think if um, anyone took the, saw the Sultan's Elephant um, a year and a half ago or two years ago, um, and the impact that had with almost no marketing whatsoever, it just completely galvanised uh, London and brought people... There's going to be more of that um, as not elephants but something else, um, more of that as well. And I think um, uh, I, I, my hope is that um, at the end of that sort of three-month period, um, people, you know, as we go into those dark days of November and December when the clocks have gone back, just look back at the summer and think, wow, what an amazing summer and amazing things happened, not just on the sporting field, but also in arts and culture too. And Tony, it sounds like that almost could be something that could be taken out nationally as well. And again, to the point earlier yeah. in Manchester and other places, yeah. there could be I, venues that tie in with and that. The, and the, the thing which, I, you know, to go back to the media cynicism, and you can write the headlines now, can't you? You know, sort of, you bring this whole thing in on budget. Um, the headline is, um, Olympic bosses get sums wrong, you know, that sort of thing. <laughs> But I, I think the moment when the torch relay begins and people start seeing it going round the UK is going to be a moment of huge excitement when people think it's happening and it's coming near me. And, and I think that's going, to be the, that's going to be when it really does viscerally take off for people in this country. So Tessa, the one measure of success. I think the measure of success is the second of our legacy promises, which is transforming a generation of young people through sport. Um, and I think of, you know, all the young people I know um, from the widest range of backgrounds. And I can't think of any, uh, you know, anyone who would be diminished by uh, just sport being part of their lives. And uh, I, I think I, I was just, you know, get, you, you reminded me really with the... Um, when you, when you referred to Paris, because I remember Seb and I sitting in my room at the Department of Culture, um, and you know Paris was uh, you know was was sort of just assumed um, to be the 2012 host, and we just sat there and we said the only thing we can do is to take some big risks and to go for broke, and that was why we decided that we would take with us to Singapore 30 young people from 20, diff 20 different nationalities, speaking 22 different languages, and instead of 30 uh, corporate sponsors. And I think that almost more than anything else, that was, no, the, 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 it's, the, there are lots of, and more than anything else, things that won us our, uh, what, what won us our bid. Um, but I think that uh, th the, the visual impact of those young people was so powerful because as Matt said, you know, that is the face of London. That is the city that London is, that we love so much and get so excited by. So I think that, you know, to be true to that and, you know, to say in 20 years time, 
what would I feel was a kind of job well done if, um, if it were